in the old days we had plastic case lithium iron phosphate cells like this Kalb CA100. Now these have a nice and thick plastic case that contains the internal plates, electrolyte and separators and essentially these didn't need compression because the case um, handled that for us. Now if you compare the size of this 100 amp hour uh, generation one cell we'll call it with these new 202 amp hour cells we have you can see there's significantly more power in much less volume comparing the two. Now how did they achieve that you may be wondering. Well internally they're quite a bit different but one of the things that they did do was they thinned out the case and went with aluminum. Now this aluminum is really thin actually and it doesn't do much besides for contain the stuff within. It doesn't have much structural integrity, whereas with the plastic case, we did have that structural integrity. So to prevent these batteries from having any issues such as swelling, we need to effectively keep the cells pressed tight to each other because when these cells start charging, when they get to around 3.4 volts, they will actually start to grow ever so slightly. And once they grow and once they bulge out, that is irreversible. And you can't just squeeze them back into um, their original size. Now, I have a cell here where I've marked an area. And you can kind of see this circle. This is the general area that they tend to swell. It's in the middle of this large side and nothing at all on the small faces of the batteries. It's all on this side. So we need a way effectively to keep this from pushing out on the ends and pushing against the cells next to it. Before I get too much farther into this, this applies for about 90% of these aluminum case cells. Now some of these aluminum case cells, they've used thicker case material that is structurally integral. Um, some examples are the fortune cells. Those ones don't need compression, but for the run of the mill commodity grade, um, lithium iron phosphate batteries and aluminum shells like you see here, it is required. So where you need to look is in the specification sheets for the battery and see if they talk about compression or fixturing or that kind of thing because if it requires it and you don't do it, you could irreversibly damage your battery. So over here I have some white HDPE. This is the same material they make cutting boards for kitchens out of. And this is some offcut that I got from a local uh, stainless steel kitchen manufacturer. This is just about right. If you take a look at these cells, it is ever so slightly shorter, maybe about three eighths of an inch shorter than the cells. But this was a scrap. It was free. It works for me. You could literally go to like Walmart or the dollar store and buy some uh, cutting boards. Now this is half inch thick. There is a piece of angle iron here. This is one inch by one inch angle iron. And here in a minute I'll show you how to use this to reinforce this material. So that way if you get something that is roughly this thickness, you can add some extra support to make it nice and stout. And uh, then you don't have to worry about this piece of material flexing. I also have some threaded rods and some miscellaneous hardware, and that's what I'm going to be using. Essentially, well, we're gonna be putting two squares of this cutting board material on the ends, and then running some rods across top and bottom, and then tightening down the nuts to create pressure on these batteries. I drew up a template in AutoCAD. So this is actual size. So if I were to measure here, you would see that this is eight and 13 sixteenths. So I can use this because I designed this to match up with the cells here. And you can see where those holes are. It gives me a perfect template on where I wanna put that rod. I also have a template here for the angle iron so that way I can drill holes and that matches up with the holes that I have in this template here as well. So I've got this template cut out now and I've, uh, I'm right on the edges of my poly about equal distance on either side. So now I can just take a Sharpie and run it down the edge. And then this stuff cuts really easy with a circular saw. With these pieces cut, I can throw my template back on. I'm actually gonna line up the bottom for the holes. And I marked in the center of these holes a 1 16th hole. So I'm gonna use here a 1 16th drill bit and drill a pilot hole. And now I'm going with 7 16 so that my 3 8 rods fit in there and have a little bit of play so that I don't have to fight it as I'm putting it together.
Now I need to get this aluminum angle iron to match up with those screw holes. I'm going to make it 8 and 13 16 long so that it matches the plastic pieces at the end. And I'm going to need a total of four pieces and then I'll worry about drilling my holes in it after I have it cut. My original plan was to center punch these. However, I couldn't find my center punch. So in this case, we're just going for it, and these holes will also be 7 16ths of an inch. We need to figure out exactly how long to make these threaded rods. Now I say exact, but it's not all that critical. So to do that, we need to measure these batteries. So these four batteries come out at just over 8 and 5 8 inches. Now, I'm not being super precise here. We're going to call eight and a half for easy numbers. I have two pieces of half inch thick material here. So that's going to be nine and a half inches. And then I have a quarter inch if you add the angle iron dimension on both sides. So add all that together and then a little bit more for the, um, the nuts we're going to be using. I usually do about three quarters of an inch on each side and that will be our total cut length. So in this case, that will be 11 and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna take my threaded rods over to my chop saw, kind of over here on the side of the set, and uh, get them measured up. And I'm actually gonna cut them all at once. Now I realize you guys may not have a fancy chop saw like I do, but you could literally cut this stuff with a hacksaw. It's plenty easy enough. It's just going to take a little bit of patience and some elbow grease. I'm using nylock nuts, which means I need to grab the rod with a, uh, a wrench. And that's how I need to get it started. So uh, these were sharp. I should have deburred these a little bit, but I've got it pretty much flush there on the end. And that's about where I want it to be. I'm gonna slip a washer through, and then I'm going to take this and pass it through one of these angle pieces, like that, and then through the hole in the plastic, just like that. And then my other angle iron piece, and then I'm gonna put a washer, and then another nylock nut. And then we'll repeat this process on all four of the rods, so now you may be saying, hey, there's a pretty huge gap in here. Couldn't I have made these pieces a bit smaller and uh, shifted them over? I have that gap on purpose because for tightening down these threaded rods, it is easiest just to grab that rod in the middle with channel locks and then use a socket wrench to tighten that. And I wouldn't want to be nicking the, uh, the cells as I do this. So having that gap there really helps me um, protect the cells and make sure that I'm not uh, scratching them as I tighten this. So you're probably wondering right about now, how much torque is enough torque? Is there a certain maybe foot pound range or inch pound range? Well, that's a very interesting question. Um, in, in this case, this is not a totally perfect um, compression fixture. There is a spec for how many um, how many pounds of force per square inch you're supposed to have in this compression. But here's kind of how this works. If you have zero compression, that's the worst. If you have too much compression, that's the second worst. Now, there is a very uh, fine line that's the perfect amount of compression for maximum cell life, but some compression will still help a lot, if that makes some sense. So if you're at the point where these are like bubbling out and, and the, the middle is pushing out and the outsides are squeezed together, that's too much, but you're probably not at the point where you're doing harm. The biggest issue is going to be on your compression jig. If you're starting to bend it, that's the problem. With this type of setup, um, you really can't get too much. You're going to get to a point where um, either the angle iron aluminum or the plastic is going to start bending too much or you're stripping out nuts on the threaded rod. But this is a lot better than having nothing at all. The other thing too is if you're trying to maintain a constant force 
and these cells are trying to expand, then that force is going to increase as your state of charge goes up. So at full charge, there would then be more force. So some other members of the community are using springs to maintain a more equal force. This is what I like. And I mean, honestly, if you pick up these batteries, it's not like they're falling out the bottom. So you can tell it's enough force to keep them from sliding against each other. Um, there's not really a gap in there. Now, one thing I definitely want to mention, these right here are some 310 amp hour cells. These are pretty much, uh, pretty much junk. And the reason why is because these have bulged out ever so slightly. So also this one has shipping damage, but either way, if I were to put these cells together, you can see in here, if you get up close, there's a gap and they kind of rock against each other. You see the gap in there. These could not just be forced together um, until they touch, because these are just, these are not good cells. Now these ones, since they're grade A, they're not bulged at all. You can see I couldn't even stick my fingernail in there or a business card or nothing um, because they have nice planar sides that when they squeeze, they're, they're not bulging. I mean, it's simple as that. So one thing I need to touch on before we clamp all this down is the configuration of these cells. Now, these cells are straight out of the box. They have never been bottom or top balanced, nothing like that. They're just as is. Now, in order to top balance cells, and I'll link in a video on this uh, in a card in the corner, you need to connect all of the positives on one side together and all of the negatives on one side. So in this case, we'd put bus bars kind of like this and put the nuts on and charge this until this whole pack was at 3.65 volts in parallel. Now, the problem with that is you need the cells in compression to do that top balance but then you need to connect them in series. In other words, the positive of the first cell needs to connect to the negative of the second cell. So that presents a challenge. Now to overcome that challenge, there are two options. You can get some battery cable and crimp up a little cable like this that goes across so that you can drain these down to about 30% state of charge. And uh, then you can remove these and reconfigure the two cells so that you can use your, your short bus bars for the negative positive configuration. It looks something like this, except these two cells would be flipped around and that's how you get 12 volts. But uh, yeah, just something I wanna to touch on that you may have to configure these a little bit interesting for your initial top balance and then reconfigure them once they have been top balanced. Now, something that I did just to make things a little bit easier, I had some custom bus bars made that are extra long. I have a uh, bus bar stamping die. So I just stamped these out and they work perfectly like that. And now I have negative here and positive here for 12 volts. And I can still use my normal bus bars for um, top balancing in parallel. And then I can use these to discharge them the first time down to 30%. And then I can remove them and then take the second and fourth cell like this and reconfigure it and use those other bars. I hope this makes sense because it's something that is not mentioned in other YouTube videos that um, it does play a huge part in the fixturing and compression. One other thing, I have two uh, CATL 310 amp hour cells here and these same bars that I just showed fitting on this cell these also fit on the 310 amp hour cells. So if you're interested in getting this size bar, um, be sure to reach out to us. We'll have our contact information down in the description. I hope that makes some sense, um, you know, what cell compression is, how to accomplish it, and uh, take my tip on top balancing these. You don't wanna bring these up to full state of charge without being in compression. Um, and the other thing you don't want to do is release the compression while they're at a full state of charge.